Hi, I'm Varsha and I'm a first year medical student at Imperial College London and today I'm going to be telling you 10 tips for students who are starting their first year of medical school. Tip number one, do not rush buying resources. So for, for example, for anatomy, there are many different resources available, many different textbooks. Do not rush buying a textbook or a set of flashcards if you're not sure, if you've never even seen them before. So if you, if a friend has a version, maybe look at it first and then see, try studying from it for a day and then buy it. Do not just buy a textbook or a flashcard set just because somebody has told you that it's a good resource everybody finds different resources useful and that is the truth because you will hear different medical students use different things to study from and on google there are always free samples available of different textbooks there's always free pdf versions available as well even if they're old versions for example 2017 the 2017 version of an atlas or the or like a really really old version do not just buy the up to the latest edition thing because just first have a look at the resources online if you can find a preview of it a sample of it if you find that then study from that if you can borrow it from someone else borrow it from them borrow it from the library first see if you find it useful and then buy a textbook because a lot of people actually go around just buying a textbook just because someone's told them that it's good and that's really a waste of money where you could even just study from the free PDF version online. You don't have to, you don't have to buy the whole textbook. Do not purchase anything just because someone has told you that it's a good book or it will, or that's the only thing you need for medical school because that's not, that might not entirely be true. It might be useful, but always make sure that you just check a preview version online. Tip number two, mix up your learning style. So medicine has a lot of content that you need to memorize and there is so much you need to learn. And obviously people talk about being a kinesthetic learner, being an auditory learner or a visual learner. Meanwhile, these all, all of these things are true. The thing is that you should, no matter what kind of learner you are, if you want to use that as the majority, that is fine. There is truth to that. However, you should also include some sort of auditory learning in your in your study so for example you know that medicine is a really auditory field auditory field it has a lot of like you have to be speaking to people listening to people and jotting down things really fast when while you're a medical student when you even become a doctor so i feel like voice recordings have really really helped me hearing my own voice hearing other people's voice like so what i used to so what i did was um make summaries of the lecture slides but in the sense that like a proper, a very, very short summary, like a five minute audio recording of myself. And then I just used to listen to that on, on the train journey whenever I used to go to uni or come back home in that sense. So just make sure you mix up your learning style. Don't make, don't let yourself get bored. There is that thing that, oh, I learned this way best. So, but sometimes it's okay to use less efficient study methods when you know that you need, your brain needs kind of a, a break. But make sure active recall is your main main strategy of learning. Recordings or voice recordings are a really, really good way to to enhance your learning. Number three, color code everything, all your curriculum content. So by that, what I mean is you should have a resource, for example, a spreadsheet or a Word document where you've listed out everything in your curriculum and all the lecture, all the lecture titles, everything and make sure some are some are colored as red and some are colored as green so make sure you just have some sort of way to distinguish between what your areas of weakness are in medicine it is so important to be time efficient there is ev you need to memorize a lot of stuff there is a lot to learn so if you know your weaknesses that is a really really good starting point because whenever you feel like revising or whenever you have some extra time you can just open up that document or you can just open up your list of lecture slide names and in that if you see some red lecture slide red lecture slide markers then you would then you're going to know that this is where i should start from so that is really really important because then you can target your areas of weakness 
and not go over stuff which you already know maybe just to stay in your comfort zone so that will help you grow out of your comfort zone and you will just build on your areas of weakness and review these regularly so if you know that something is red make sure you have indicated that something has been your area of weakness in the past so in the future when you look back at it you won't just see that it's green you will you will know that that has been red in the past so knowing that knowing that something has been read in the past something has a specific lecture has been an area of weakness in the past that will force you to reinforce it even though it is green at present even though you feel like you know it in at the at, pre, at the present moment you will realize that oh this is something which was a weakness in the past so maybe i should still revisit it even though i've highlighted highlighted that specific lecture as my strength because we are human we do tend to forget stuff and um, even if we feel like you've consolidated something, if it has been an area of weakness in the past, that always has the potential to become an area of weakness again. So make sure you review regularly. And for that, I would like to link below Ali Abdal's retrospective revision timetable. That is a really, really good way to remember. That is a really, really good way to remember and note down everything which you feel like you should revisit in the future. And it's a very, very good organized method of making sure that you do space repetition. Tip number four, use sketchy medical and picmonics for disease names. So in medicine, you are going to learn a lot of random disease names. In any random lecture, there's going to be at least maybe one or two disease names that they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you the symptoms of the disease or those sorts of things. You're going to learn about a lot and a lot of diseases. So remembering that, sort of stuff is kind of tricky to remember specific things about a certain disease stuff like that but picmonics and um picmonics and sketchy medical what they do is that they associate images with the diseases this is especially helpful if you're a visual learner but i feel like any sort of any person this will help anybody because having something visual there will really really help you to remember of course, cross-check how much you need to know about that specific disease with your lecture slide and the website in general. So don't learn everything that is there in that specific picmonic or that image. What happens is they repeat some same images in the story. There's like a story that they make about that disease and they include certain characters which sound like each other. And then that story develops over, over the course of that small, small short video or that specific short video section. And what happens is the symptoms, the drugs associated with that disease, it says it in a very story type manner. And that's it's really, really helpful to remember because they include characters and remembering characters is much easier than remembering specific things about the disease. It's just a really, really useful resource. You should definitely check it out. And um, whenever you see a disease name, just go on Google and go on to that website and just try and understand what will help you from that specific story or that specific picmonic what drug you need to know just try and remember that specific section of the video or the story you don't have to watch the whole picmonic or the whole or the whole sketchy medical video you just have to find what you what's relevant for you what you need to know and just pick out stuff specific things you can use images to help you re retain specific things that you need to know for your course at your medical university tip number five get yourself a small a5 notebook so this is something which i did i don't know if it will help you or not but it's worth a try so what i did was get a small a5 notebook and that's just easy to keep in your bag and you can just when you when you're on the train or when you're traveling or when when you finish your day really just keep it on your desk and some and just write down from memory everything you've learned that day so if you went to a lecture Maybe write down 10 points from that specific lecture that you remember from, for that day. If you had a tutorial, write down 10 points from that tutorial or that lab session that you had. So I feel like that really helps me because since it's so small, it's just easy that you carry it everywhere. If you have like an extra 5 minutes or 10 minutes, you can just start writing down what you learned yesterday. And that just, that just helps learning. Your learning needs to be current. It needs to be... There's always this thing that people think that, oh... Um, I will revise this topic that we're learning today. It's hard, but I'll revise it tomorrow. I'll revise it later. But you should really be consolidating everything as you're going in medicine. So having something like a small space where you can literally just 
take out all of the stuff you remember from this from that specific day that sort of small portable that small sort of small portable book it's a really really simple idea but i feel like having that just there it forms a really really good habit of you just writing everything down and it's because it's small it limits you it helps you to summarize everything you won't write down tons and tons of information that you remember you write down the main key points from that specific day and focusing on the main concepts overall is really really important in medicine if you understand the main concepts that is that is your first step into doing really really well and then you can focus on the details in proper revision sessions so that is sort of that that conceptualizing that summarizing your information in that sense all by yourself with active recall that's really really important and having a limited space having a small book a small notebook that really really puts some boundaries as to how much you can write so it's literally just five bullet points just when you're on the train when you're on the tube or just make a habit at night before you go to sleep you write down in that book what you learned for that specific day that you never have to read that again it's just so that you blurt everything out that you have learned on that specific day i feel like that just helps you to stay up to date with what is going on right now even if you don't get to review it properly you will still learn something out of that specific day tip number six google key concepts and mnemonics and ways to remember key concepts a particular example of this where this is really really useful is in anatomy in anatomy there are so many key concepts anatomy is a very universal thing over the whole world most medical students learn the same type of anatomy there are the same sorts of small small things like cranial nerves the circle of willis those sorts of things you are going to find so many mnemonics so many ways to remember those small sorts of concepts online you don't always have to make your own way to remember things but for anything, if you feel like you can't remember something, just your first call should just be, let me just Google a way to remember it. And that's a really, really helpful strategy because usually you don't find things in GCSE or A-level, you, you don't really find things online which help you remember specific certain words and certain diseases or things like that. But in medicine, there is a lot of that. There is a lot of help available online. And you don't have to always make stuff from your own brain to remember certain specific things. Just Google key concepts like that and those things that other people come up with can be really, really funny as well and nice to share. But also it's just it just saves your time from making something to remember a specific concept. A quick Google just helps you consolidate it. You can write that specific mnemonic down and just use that for the rest of your first year and it will, it will really really help you remember it will really really help you remember that specific thing tip number seven link diseases to people that you know so since you're in the healthcare field now you're a medical student it's really very really useful for you to remember that if you link a disease name to a person you know so for example Hyper, hypothyroidism. I know somebody who has hypothyroidism. So whenever I learn about hypothyroidism, I just imagine that person. Um, I imagine that person um, suffering through those symptoms because I've seen that person actually go through all of that. So that's a really, really useful thing to do. Your brain just generally remembers things to do with your emotional connection much, much more than you just passively reading large information you just passively reading a large information of text so just link diseases to people you know whenever you come across a disease think think of a person it doesn't even have to be a family member it can be or, or it doesn't even have to be a family member or a friend it can be imaginary people that you made up and that whenever you come across that disease in a clinical scenario in later years i think that will also be useful then because you will have that specific thing that you can link back to always it's really, really useful to categorize in that sense when you relate to that one person because when you relate the drugs that you use in that specific disease, the pathophysiology of that disease and the the symptoms of that disease to just that one person, it just becomes much more condensed down and there is that specific key concept that you always draw on that one person whenever you come back to that same illness and that helps you keep all the information together in your brain and it's just much, much easier to remember if you remember it in that sense. So that's a small tip for remembering diseases.
Tip number eight, make a bank of key words. So when you have specific topics like cardiology, gastroenterology, neurology, make a list of key words for each specific topic that reoccur throughout the whole topic. For example, in cardiology, we learned a lot about preload and we learned the two words preload and afterload, but that kept that concept, that those two keywords kept reoccurring every now and then in every other lecture or tutorial. So having those ingrained in your memory from before that's really really important and it's make it's important that you identify those as key con because sometimes keywords can actually actually link to certain concepts as well so if you understand those keywords you that will help you remember those concepts about that specific subject as well make sure that those keywords you you either make flashcards on those keywords or having those 40 50 words in that specific topic that helps you really really summarize that whole topic really well in that sense and whenever you do come across another another theory relating to and whenever you do come across another thing relating to that specific keyword you will always always understand what it means so if you hear about that same keyword in a different context you will automatically know what that is without a second thought and that's a very very useful skill to have in order to just make sure you understand a subject on its own. Tip number nine, make flashcards. So I understand that some people really don't like making flashcards but in medical school and in medicine in general you have to remember a lot of discrete facts and flashcards is a really really quick way to review those specific facts that you might not really remember otherwise and that's why I feel like just make flashcards on things which you don't know. So maybe make flashcards on on those keywords that I mentioned in the previous in the previous tip so in that sense even if you have like 30 flashcards on one specific topic even if you have 200 or 300 flashcards overall in your whole in your whole year but just make sure that you have a specific set every single day that you do so for example what helped me really was having that daily target of completing 50 flashcards every day and having that small target of 50 flashcards which only takes you about 45 minutes maybe because it those flashcards are really really short i made sure they were very very short four five word questions and answers so it's very very discrete facts which you feel like you won't be able to remember otherwise don't make flashcards on everything just make sure flashcards is a way of your revision in some sort of way or another i really do hope that some of those tips were useful for you if you're starting medical school this year thank you for watching